I went for cervical cancer screening because we know that um, people living with HIV, their immune system is low, so they are likely to have any disease which comes. I was one of them who thought that I should go for this cervical cancer test, and I was found with precancer. What used to happen was most of the attention was um, drawn to HIV, so interventions were introduced. ARVs were introduced, women were able to access the ARVs but would still find that despite them accessing the ARVs and all the services that come with the ART clinic, they were still dying from cervical cancer. So imagine you treat somebody and put them on treatment for life and yet they succumb to cancer of the cervix because you didn't manage it. So that is why it is extremely important that we manage the two. The, the Pink Ribbon Red Ribbon program um, is a program that is trying to integrate HIV and uh, cervical cancer services and we have benefited from that program. We're now able to screen women, especially those who are HIV positive, for cervical cancer. A lot of women have started coming in for the services this year. We think because there's been a lot of awareness that has been created, starting with our uh, women leaders in this country, including the First Lady. President Bush's visits uh, also created quite an, an amount of awareness because immediately after his visit, we saw that uh, the turnout in our clinics was very high. I remember about uh, President Bush's visit. When I was passing, going to town, I just saw a lot of cars were parked outside. So I said, what is happening here? They said that President Bush has come to open the clinic for cervical cancer. The first lady, Dr. Kaseba Sata, she talks about this, about in encouraging women going for screening for cervical cancer. So I said, the time I'll go back to Kawe, I'll go to do the screening. When a woman walks into our screening services, this woman is also asked about her HIV status, if she knows it. If she doesn't know it and she's never been tested, we also offer counseling and testing for HIV to this woman. Then the nurses will will carry out a procedure called visual inspection with acetic acid, which is just vinegar. They'll, they'll soak the cervix for roughly about five minutes to be able to identify precancerous lesions. If the lesion that is found is quite small, they use cryotherapy using nitrous oxide gas and they freeze off the abnormal lesions. However, if the lesion is quite large, they'll refer the client to Kawa General Hospital. When I was told that I have this spree cancer me, I thought that that was the end of me. But I was told that no, when we find you with this spree cancer, it's curable. I would say the major challenge that we have right now is the staffing. The entire province only has five people who are trained and yet, um, as you've heard, we have screened over a thousand women in the five months. So there are times when it could be quite overwhelming. I think that both this government as well as the United States government have agreed that the resources need to be found. We need to make sure that not only Lusaka, but that every woman can have this service done wherever they are and that will require a lot of training, a lot of equipment, and a lot of resources. But I am very hopeful that through this, within the next four or five years, I think we should see cancer of the cervix going on the decline. By offering these services that I'm giving to these women, I feel that I'm improving their life because I get assured that this woman has a little longer to live other than her um, dying from cervical cancer. Yes, we are happy to have these services, ART services and cancer screening because it's helping the women in the community and from other communities. I went for treatment and now I'm feeling fine and I'm very sure that I've been cured.